after I made a video how I connected my entire electric system myself, installed solar panels and everything, people kept asking why this box is not even, couldn't I have put it straight? Why I have this breaker outside of this huge box that I have over here? And the main thing why I don't, why I don't have the breaker for another set of solar panels. Well, these all are very fair notes and I'm going to fix it today. Why this solution that I have right now is bad? Because it goes straight from solar panels to inverter without the breaker. And when I need to disconnect solar panels, and I'll explain why I need to disconnect solar panels in a sec, when I need to disconnect solar panels, I have to go through the dangerous process of taking out one of the cables out of the inverter. Normally, as I understand, nothing bad should happen. But this is a dangerous process and especially dangerous when you have to perform it when you are alone and there is no one to call emergency or help you in any way. And this is not how it normally should be done. Solar panels should be connected to the breaker and then break it to the inverter. So in case you need, you can just switch off the breaker and this is it, and you have them disconnected. In which case I or anyone else would need to do so. For example, during the last week there were a lot of days in a row when there was no sun, and at some point I had nothing in my batteries, and inverter was saying error 4, and it was blinking in this position. To reset the inverter, I have to leave it without any source of power, which means without batteries, and as I have two strings of solar panels without both strings of solar panels. And for one string that I have, where I have the breaker already, I can just switch it off, but for another string I, where I don't have the breaker, I had to disconnect the cable from inverter directly to be able to reset inverter later. So I went through this dangerous process with security, with my glasses on, with uh, guantes, with gloves, with crocs on, so I don't touch the ground. But I don't want to repeat this dangerous process anymore. That's why today I'm going to install the breaker. This is the input from solar panels that I had directly in the inverter. What I need to do between inverter and these solar panels, I need to put a box, the same as this, I need to put a box that I can switch on and switch off with this thing. But as I have a beautiful box already here, I'm going to put this breaker, new one from the new set of solar panels, and this one from the older set of solar panels, inside this box where they belong to be. And then I will have everything neat and tidy in one place over here. What I have in this box, this is a box like this, but if you look closer, it's nothing more than breakers in plastic box. So I could have bought just breakers, but I didn't think about it at that time, and put them in here. This would be better money-wise. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, do, to take these breakers from this box, I'm going to disassemble this box and take breakers out of here and put this all in this box. First thing I need to do is to disconnect any source of power from this box. I have already disconnected one string of solar panels. I have switched off this breaker of another string of solar panels. Now I'm turning off the inverter and I'm turning off the connection between batteries and inverter. Also, I'm turning off each battery, just in case. And my charge from electric generator is off as well. Now, I'm going to disassemble this box first. It is connected to inverter with the MC4 connectors for solar panels. I'm disconnecting them. Now I'm going to take away the cover of this box to see what's happening there. And on another side of this breaker, I have solar panel connectors MC4 
as well. So I'm going to disconnect those. Now with the special key for solar panel connectors, I'm disconnecting these ones. The exterior cover is connected with screws. I'm taking it away. Okay, now let's take away the screws that are holding the cables. And this allows me to unscrew this plastic cover and take the cables out. This is the box. In the same way, I'm disconnecting the cables that go below. Before, I had my cables from the new set of solar panels entering through the window, and I want to place them in the chimney where I have my all communications in the roof, so they all go through the roof inside the house. All right, I think this is enough. Now, I need four new cables that I will put in the place of those that I have got rid of. I need two red cables and two black cables, approximately of the same length. Now, I'm preparing the cable for the connection. For this, I have this uh, two that is designed for it, but it's a little bit crappy. Actually, you can do it with cotton, or with a good tool that does it instantly, like on those YouTube videos. So now I have all endings of my four cables prepared for connecting. All right, now when I have my cable free from the plastic cover, I can turn it a little bit to prepare it for solar panels connectors. This MC4 solar panel connectors, they consist of two parts, male and female. Each plastic part has the metal part inside. And what is important to know that female plastic part should have male metal part inside of it and vice versa. And also, it's important to cut the cable until this little marking on the connector. If you, if you leave it too long, the metal connectors won't go inside each other, they won't connect properly. And if you cut it too short, there won't be a good grip. So it's important to cut it up until this marking on the connector. There is a special tool that closes it in the shape of square, but I don't have it. And you can do it just with pliers. You just have to be attentive to make the connection carefully. I'm using small pliers to do this. Close one part first, and then on the top of that part will go another part, and they will kind of hug each other. I'm always checking if the connection is firm before putting the plastic part on. So now it just goes inside the plastic part. There should be a click, but I noticed that in other solar panel connectors, they don't do a click sound, and I don't know why, but normally it should be a click sound. And then I'm putting this small gasket and screwing all together. I'm taking a look at the inverter to make sure that I'm connecting the proper connectors. This part will go inside the box and it is connected with the screw. And another part will have solar panel connector. So I looked underneath the inverter to make sure that what I am assuming is correct and I am using the appropriate type of connector. Here I need to put female, for example, because on the inverter I have male one. By the way, if you like videos on my channel and if you would like to support new videos coming up on this channel, you can become a member and support my channel starting from one dollar. Check out the join button below the video. So I connected all MC4 connectors to these breakers and I put these breakers inside this main box this breaker is responsible for one string of solar panels and it's connected to the string of solar panels over here and to inverter over here. 
And this one is for another set of solar panels. I have two strings, seven panels each. And in the same way, it's connected to solar panels over here and then to the inverter. This way I can turn off each string of solar panels when I want to turn them off and I can turn them on. This is for the input, two strings of solar panels and also I'm using electric generator in case of emergency that I'm charging through this charger. Also I hanged this box nicely, all leveled and in the end I have this result. I guess the next step to make this all better would be to install a few, maybe three breakers instead of one and make the proper electric system. Because for now I just have this plug to power my computer, my monitor and all the tools that I'm using outside and for the light inside the house I'm just uh, using the LED lights and power banks. Oh, and by the way, I have a very cool thing that measures power. Originally, it was sold as a breaker, and I'm going to put it inside the box later. But I connected input and output for it to be able to measure each device separately. So this way I can measure each and every device in my house separately, how much it consumes and know for sure how much it consumes. At this very moment it shows on the display and also it saves data through Wi-Fi in the app and I can see the consumption over the time. I can see how much fridge is consuming, for example, during the day, the water pump, the Starlink or even sewing machine. But this is another story for another time. And while I'm working on the next video, check out the video that I made before about how predicted solar power generation compared to real solar power generation in my house that I was observing during few months. It should be on the screen right now. Cheers! Bye!